So welcome to another Chris Chris show, a show so good it needs to be stated twice. If you enjoy the content that I deliver on a consistent basis, please be sure to subscribe and turn the notification bell for all my videos. If you like and participate in the comment section. And as you know of Chris Chris, I'm gonna give you the news whenever the news is there. And the news that people have been talking about in the past week or so has been the NBA. As we all know, we're in pandemic, so the off season's a little bit different than ever it was. The championship was won in the October, that's usually when the seasons begin. So now we're in off season mode, players allowed to go wherever they want. We already had some moves transpire. So we had Chris Paul traded to the Suns from the Oklahoma City Thunder, and we have Drew Holiday traded for the New Orleans Pelicans all the way to the Milwaukee Bucks. Now those moves, the Chris Paul move, the Suns might move into the playoffs. The Bucks, they might be able to keep Giannis from it. They might be able to have a championship caliber team. Either way, these teams are making moves to improve them themselves to get them over the hump to be better than who the Lakers were who are the defending champs right now. So with all of that said, the big thing going on tonight is the NBA draft. So that's when the young players who are going to be defining the league for the next 10 to 15 years are ready to make their mark. They're ready to find what team they're going to be on and what home they're going to be at for the next few years. I mean, what I'm here to talk to you guys about today, I'm going to give you guys an instant analysis, an instant reaction that will be up for you guys in the next day, talking about who are the winners, who are the losers who do you feel made the best pick who do you feel made the worst pick who do you think is going to be the best player in a draft who do you think is the most overrated all of that we're going to be digging deep into now for the actual draft there is a lot of talk about trades were going to happen the warriors were talking about moving it the wolves were talking about moving their pick even the bulls were talking about potentially moving it the hawks wanted to move pick six there was a lot of talk going on. The Hawks were going to move it with the Celtics. The Warriors were maybe going to trade back and add Wendell Carter from the Bulls in a piece. Or they were just going to use it outright for someone else. There's just been a lot of talk but we get to draft night and and it was a letdown there was no trade within the first top 10 of the draft the draft went chalk as far as the first three it went anthony edwards to the minnesota timberwolves which with that pick don't get me wrong anthony edwards is talented but if you were reading into him or looked at his interview he doesn't sound like a person that loves basketball and sound like he loves football more and if he had the chance to be an nfl player over an nba player he would that that's not someone I want to take to lead my franchise. Maybe because they have Carl Anthony Towns or something, they think he could be the number two, but that's not someone that sounds like that's going to be leading my franchise for years to come. Because with basketball, you got to have that work ethic. Because if you don't work on your game, someone else is going to eventually get better. Because when people come into the league, they can't shoot. But if they work on their game over the years, they learn something, they talk to the right shooting coach. But either way, it's working on your craft and just saying you don't love the game of basketball that rubs me the wrong way so I don't know about that one then we have James Wiseman who in one of my previous videos a way back he sat out the season he only ended up playing like three games so don't get me wrong James Wiseman is talented but there's not enough film or not enough to know if there was enough film he probably would be the first pick and someone would have trade up for him but with this whole no NCAA tournament no him not having it this draft is just really up in the air and then we get to our third pick Lamelo ball went to the new orleans hornets and he was playing overseas so to some people you know we can't see him because it's not on ncaa so it's just the same thing of course there's film on him and the scouts do it and i think Lamelo's ball is good from the highlights i've seen but this draft it just felt different like i said the no ncaa tournament so usually a lot of people showcase themselves and they elevate them from maybe a mid to first round pick to a top 10 some people lose their stock when they have a bad ncaa tournament we missed march madness because of the coronavirus and it really affected this draft but there was just one pick that seemed a little bit off and that was with the bulls taking patrick williams from florida state university in that instance he came off the bench and he was only averaging nine points and four rebounds a game i understand that he has a lot of upside and he's a good defender but i would rather trade down before I make that pick because taking someone that didn't even start on their college team that always just reminds me back to Marvin Williams and he was taken over Chris Paul obviously there's no one as talented as Chris Paul in his draft but either way I'm just not a huge fan of taking college players off the bench yes 
outside of the top eight, but in the top five, nah, that's just not gonna cut it for me. That's why I trade him back in. The rest of the draft was mostly chalk. I did like the Obi Toppin pick from New York. He has a lot of upside. When someone grows seven inches from their junior year to their senior year, that means they started having point guard skills and they developed the big man skills. And a lot of his highlight tapes were just dunks, but people like that, they have a bigger projection. So I do like the upside in that pick. Will it hit right away? Probably not, but that's one of those a few years down the line, the Knicks might have actually made a good pick. But also with the NBA draft night, there's always a lot of trades going on. There's teams making moves. There's teams that are doing signing trades. So before the draft happened, there was already a big trade that went down. And this is between the Oklahoma City Thunder and the Philadelphia 76ers. So before I go deep into what happened, who won, who lost, how do I feel about the trade and what transpires from it, let me just tell you the full details of the trade. So the 76ers get Danny Green, then they get Terrence Ferguson. And then the Oklahoma City Thunder get Al Horford and a first and second round pick. The first round pick is in 2025. And the second round pick is a 34th pick tonight, so the Thunder will already be able to capitalize on that. And they also get the rights to Vasela Mehe who's a European top point guard, and I might pronounce that wrong. I did my best. But either way, that's the information given about the trade. So Al Horford has three years and 81 million left on his contract. And many people, me included, when he signed with Philadelphia, I thought, because me personally, I didn't think him, Joel Embiid, and Tobias Harris would be able to be worked as a three, four, five on the same team. There's gonna be spacing issues. There's gonna just be too many people trying to do the same thing. And yes, Al Horford has develop a three-point shot but he's not a prolific three-point shooter and he's already started his decline I mean Al Horford is 34 so he's had a pretty good career he's been an all-star majority of it he's been always a plus defender or plus passer but you could just tell watching Al Horford this year this wasn't the same Al Horford that was in Boston or in Atlanta he was definitely washed so a good on the Sixers to get out of the three years 81 million so after this season they'll be able to potentially capitalize on the cap Cap space. He might be able to use some of the cap space right now because Danny Green only had a one-year $15 million contract. So there's just a lot of things to play out, but clearly the Sixers are content on building around Simmons and Embiid. We'll see what they do with this new cap situation. And as for the Thunder, they have 17 first round picks. These people are just building and building and building. Watch Sam Presti try and rehabilitate Al Horford's status and try and get a first round pick for him. Either way, the Thunder are in a good position whenever they're ready to start making their move or wanting to make a move for a star or get a star or even after they draft a star potentially, they have the ammunition to get it done. So that's what you need to do. You got, Sometimes you gotta wait it out, get all the assets you can and see what it is. How do you guys feel about the trade? If you're a Sixers fan, are you happy to no longer see Al Horford and that you actually have cap flexibility in the future? Are you sad to see the 2025 first round pick go? Or you're like, we're in win now mode, who gives a shit? And for you Thunder fans, are you happy to keep stacking up the first round picks? And do you actually feel like this is gonna transpire into a really good team one day? So as far as trades on draft night, we finally got a little movement when we got to the later teens. The Minnesota so the Timberwolves and Oklahoma City Thunder have made a trade where Ricky Rubio is being moved along with the 28th and 25th pick for the 17th pick. This is where the Thunder are using their assets of a bunch of firsts to get someone they want at pick 17. And with the 17th pick, the Oklahoma City Thunder pick, Alexic Puksovic. He's from Greece. He's seven foot. He's someone that's, you know, he's a project, but he has a ton of upside. And this is the picks. This is what you do when you have a gluttony of picks. You pick who you want, you find some upside, and you trade for it. But that trade couldn't have transpired without the previous trade that the Oklahoma City Thunder did and when they traded their point guard Dennis Schroeder to the Lakers for the 28th pick. They used that pick in the Rubio trade. And for the Lakers, it gives them insurance just in case Rajon Rondo leaves in free agency. And he's been leaning towards the Hawks. We'll see how that happened. The Clippers have been interested as well, but we don't know if Rajon Rondo's staying with the Lakers. And also the other trade that happened
happen. Clippers traded Landry Shamit to the Nets. They were able to get Luke Kennard from the Pistons, and with the 19th pick, they picked Sadiq Bey from Villanova, who's a power forward that has upside. You know, the Pistons are farther along. Luke Kennard's going to get paid soon. He's not someone you're worth paying, but he's going to help a contender like the Clippers with three-point shooting. He's kind of an upgrade over Shamit. But I will say Shamit has more upside, and that's why I, I can see the Nets wanting him over Luke Kennard. They want someone. They need a good shooting guard, and that's someone that could potentially fill that void, either starting or off the bench, depending on what moves they make. As we all know, they have been linked to James Harden. So yeah, that's most of the moves that went down and transpired. There were no game changers. There were no franchise players being traded. There were some starters being moved, some good role players. The biggest trade to me was the one with Al Horford and Danny Green. The Sixers being able to get out of that contract. That's important to them. You guys, just let me know how you feel about this whole draft night overall. How do you feel about the free agency? Do you actually think James Harden will go to the Nets and force his way upon? And you let me know, like I said, who do you think made the best pick? Who made the worst pick? Who had the best draft overall? Who didn't? For me, for me, I think the Hornets are going to end up with the best draft. I've been a huge LaMelo Ball fan from day one. You know, people always have LaVar Ball hanging over them, but at the end of the day, both of his sons were picked top three. They were talented, so clearly he was talking up for a reason. We'll see if LaMelo Ball, I think he's going to end up being better than Lonzo. Lonzo's a good role player, but he's not a franchise changer at the moment. But as you know of Chris Chris, I'm going to give you the news whenever the news is available, whether that's today day tomorrow a week or two from now and also whether that's hip-hop politics sports whatever's being talked about what's ever going on in the world i will discuss it that's why you need to make sure you subscribe you have notification bell turned on for all my videos you like comment share this video with your friends if you enjoyed it this chris chris i'm out this motherfucker